The Surge is the newly released Souls-like RPG from German developer Deck 13. You may know these guys from their work on Lords of the Fallen, another Dark Souls-inspired game. I've had The Surge for a few days now, and I wanted to put together a review so I could let you know if this is a game that you should consider getting or not. Before I get started, I wanted to let it be known that I am a huge fan of the Dark Souls series, having completed Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, as well as Bloodborne. I also have the Platinum Trophies in Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne, you know, just to let you guys know that I'm not a total filthy casual. Anyways, The Surge takes place in a dystopian future where your character named Warren must fight against corrupted humans and exosuits and machines. It hits all of the major points that you would expect from a game in this newly emerging subgenre, but it goes above and beyond in some aspects. The game features high-tech equivalents to bonfires, known as operations, where you can level your character, craft new gear, and upgrade your current gear. Skills are replaced by an implant system that lets you swap out various abilities on your character, and it's a nice touch that allows you to change your playstyle on the fly. Most areas are designed in the same way as Dark Souls areas, where you can proceed through a main hub defeating enemies and opening shortcuts, all the while working your way towards a boss. The game features a unique lock-on mechanic where you can target specific body parts. Some enemy body parts are armored and some are vulnerable. The body part specific lock-on mechanic is a nice touch and it's implemented well. If you see a new enemy carrying a weapon that you want, walk onto his arm holding that weapon and do enough damage. You'll then get a prompt to perform a finishing move and you may take off his limb and he'll drop the weapon for you to use. Combat in the surge feels really good. You've got horizontal and vertical attacks, as well as charge attacks, and every weapon has a pretty unique moveset. There are several types of weapons at your disposal, and I never got bored trying them all out. You have your basic health meter, stamina meter that you need to manage, and the game adds an additional energy meter that is used to perform finishing moves as well as some other various actions. You can dodge and block, but the blocking isn't really that effective, so dodging is going to be your primary form of avoiding damage. The dodging works well for the most part, but I have taken hits from enemy attacks that I definitely should have made it through, so be warned that the hitboxes and the iframes can be a little bit weird at times. Overall, the combat is fast and fluid, and it reminds me of how combat feels in Bloodborne, where every encounter is like an intricate dance of finding openings to dart in and do damage, and then get back out to avoid getting hit. Graphically, the game is solid enough. Now, as far as the art style, it seems a bit silly to me, but I guess it really just comes down to personal preference. I can't help but laugh when I put on the Rhino gear and I look at how silly I look. The enemy design is average overall, but the bosses that I've encountered so far have been unique enough to keep me interested. My biggest complaint about the boss fights is again a purely opinionated one, but it's really inconvenient to me for the boss health gauge to be displayed at the top of the screen. It becomes almost a chore for me to look at the very top of the screen when I'm also trying to dodge boss attacks and keep from dying and find the perfect opening to attack. There's a reason why games of this subgenre generally put the boss health bar at the bottom of the screen. It simply works better. The level design is fine, but areas can be a bit confusing at times and sort of all look similar until you get enough of a bearing to know what areas connect to where. My biggest complaint about the Surge is the way that it handles difficulty. There's so much more to being a Dark Souls-like game than just throwing cheap ambushes at you constantly and giving every enemy the ability to two-hit kill you. The game throws a huge difficulty spike at you early on, and even with leveled gear and knowledge of the mechanics, it can be really frustrating. Baiting enemies can be a real pain, as it seems as though enemy AI is designed to only head so far from its starting position at which point the enemy will then turn around and sprint back to its default location, no matter how close you get to it, you know, from behind. 
This hasn't been a huge problem so far, but it does make dealing with groups of three or four enemies incredibly challenging when you can't effectively bait them the way that you should be able to. The game just has sections where it's hard for the sake of being hard, and that's my biggest complaint. Overall, The Surge is a great time for fans of action RPGs. I recommend you guys pick it up and give it a shot if you're a die-hard Dark Souls fan. It's more fun than Lords of the Fallen, and it's unique enough to stand out on its own in many regards when it's compared to Dark Souls. However, if you're a casual RPG fan, this loose around the edges title coupled with the difficulty will probably turn you away from the game. Overall, I give The Surge a 7 out of 10. I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and if you found this review helpful, be sure to leave a like. Also, make sure to subscribe to Split Screen for more gaming news, guides, reviews, and entertainment. My name is Cody, and you guys have an awesome day.